The Nintendo GameCube, the tiny little console with the great big handle, was originally released in 2001. Sitting between the N64 and the Wii in Nintendo's home console timeline, the GameCube sold just over 20 million units worldwide. More than the Dreamcast, fewer than the original Xbox, and far, far fewer than the PlayStation 2. It was, alas, not a commercial success. Still, the console had a killer lineup of high-quality titles, from first-party behemoths to internet-famous cult classics. They came on adorably tiny discs, too. So cute. We're not looking at the obvious stuff like Smash Bros. Melee, The Wind Waker, or Resident Evil 4 for this list, though. We're not even interested in more niche classics such as Eternal Darkness, Tales of Symphonia, or Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. We are heading deep into the Nintendo mines, pickaxe in one hand, canary in the other, looking to excavate only the most deeply buried GameCube treasures. It wasn't easy. More so than other consoles, good GameCube games tend to have been popular at the time or have built up large followings in the years since. Still, with a lot of hard work, we managed to find some overlooked sparkly bits for your consideration. Sadly, though, the canary didn't make it. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and here are 10 hidden video game gems for the Nintendo GameCube. Number 10. Odama. We kick off this list with a game that can be considered a hidden gem based on oddity alone. Sometime in the early 2000s, a game developer named Yutaka Saito presumably had a fever dream about finding himself in a battlefield situation while being pursued by gigantic rolling balls. As a result, he chose to combine the tactical strategy genre with pinball for his next game. It is a bonkers idea, but it was also Saito, to be fair. He was, after all, responsible for Seaman. Set in feudal Japan, the goal of Odama is to break through your opponent's defences using a combination of clever tactics and pinball skills. Players can tilt the table to affect the ball's trajectory and use the flippers to aim at important targets. The game even came packaged with a microphone so that you could use your voice to tell your little pinball soldiers what to do. While by no means a perfect game, its innovation cannot be denied, and be honest now, have you ever played anything like it? Odama also has another interesting claim to fame. It was the last GameCube exclusive to be released for the console. Talk about going out with a really strange bang. Number 9. Fantasy Star Online Episode 3 Card Revolution Sometimes, us gamers, you know, we don't like change. The Fantasy Star Online series was chugging along nicely before its third episode. An action RPG in which players equip big glowy guns or bigger glowier swords and beam down to nearby planets to slaughter the local fauna. Who could ask for anything more? For the GameCube exclusive third episode in Sega's early MMO series though, the developers saw fit to replace the real-time combat with a turn-based card collecting system. Players could battle computer-controlled enemies or take on other players in online or offline multiplayer, uncovering a plot concerning political unrest on the gigantic spaceship Pioneer 2. The move to card battling upset fans of a series that was already fairly niche, and Fantasy Star Online Episode 3 wasn't quite the revolution the developers were hoping for. The thing is, in a vacuum, Card Revolution is actually really good. The card-based combat system allows for different playstyles depending on the chosen character class, and there is a wealth of deck customization options on offer. It might not be for everyone, and the change in style definitely lost the series some fans, but Card Revolution is proof that, sometimes, different doesn't necessarily mean bad. There's a life lesson in there somewhere. Number 8. Baton Kytos, Eternal Wings and the Lost Ocean in this card-based RPG for the GameCube, players take on the role of a young, winged fellow named Callus in a mostly traditional single-player RPG that makes use of deck building and card battling. Aside from the card mechanics, Baton Kytos Eternal Wings and The Lost Ocean is a standard but enjoyable JRPG experience. Travel through atmospheric dungeons and picturesque towns and enlist a party of colourful companions. These colourful companions include this thing and this young man who battles his enemies using various brass instruments. Delight. Actually, when I said earlier that players take on the role of Callus, that wasn't exactly true. Players actually take on the role of a guardian spirit who communicates with Callus, meaning that our blue-haired protagonist can speak directly to the TV in some disconcerting fourth-wall-breaking moments. Also, this setup leaves room for an extremely meaty plot twist later on that wouldn't have been possible if players were in direct control of Callus. I won't tell you what happens, though. I'm unearthing these hidden gems for a reason. Go play them yourself! Number 7. Geist 
The second Nintendo-published game to ever receive an M rating, Geist is a first-person shooter in which players take on the role of a spooky spirit with the ability to possess things. Protagonist John Ramey has had his soul forcibly removed by a baddie using some kind of soul extractor. Luckily, the now-ghost Ramey is saved before he can be turned into an ethereal, mind-controlled super-soldier, and now he's on a quest for spooky vengeance. In gameplay terms, this all adds up to an FPS experience that's far from the the usual fare. Players are able to control Raimi in his ghostly form and can also possess guards, forcing them to turn on their friends and gun them down. It's all a bit dark, actually. Were Geist and Eternal Darkness evidence of Nintendo having a goth phase? Perhaps. Anyway, Raimi can possess animals and can siphon power from nearby plant life. He can even possess inanimate objects and force them to move around a bit. Very spooky. Number 6. Battalion Wars Probably the most well-known game on this list, Battalion Wars' notoriety still pales in comparison to its more famous cousin, Advance Wars. While the latter is a turn-based tactical strategy game played over grid-based maps, Battalion Wars takes a third-person, real-time tactics route. This enables players to get up close and personal with its bright and cheerful depiction of deadly, desperate combat. Players can take control of armoured vehicles and aircraft, or get their boots on the ground with infantry units, capturing objectives, fulfilling missions, and feeling the thrill of battle as chaser fire whips by in every direction. At the end of the mission, players are ranked by the number of enemies destroyed, allies left alive, and the speed with which the mission was accomplished. The game's bright and breezy take on war strategy was well received by the gaming press, and it did well enough to receive a direct sequel on the Wii. However, critics and players were disappointed by the lack of any ability to wage war on friends and family members with a multiplayer mode. Still, Battalion Wars is worth digging up if you want to savour a campaign full of cartoony destruction. War is hell. Hella cute, that is! Wahey! Number 5. Wave Race Blue Storm when Nintendo and racing games are mentioned together, the Mario Kart series is probably the first that comes to mind, closely followed by the Space Age racer F-Zero. However, there is another high-quality Nintendo racing franchise out there, and this one has an added nautical twist. Wave Race Blue Storm for the GameCube is the third, and at the time of writing, final entry into the Wave Race series that started on the Game Boy way back in 1992. Presenting players with a jet ski in various ocean and lake-based locations, Wave Race Blue Storm offers high-speed water racing action with cool characters, radical jumps, and, as alluded to in the game's title, waves. In fact, these waves are kind of the stars of the show, with Blue Storm boasting water physics that were unmatched at the time. Undulating water, weather effects, and even the wakes left by other racers' jet skis affected the courses and handling just like in real-life jet ski racing. I would assume. I wouldn't know. Number 4. Beach Spikers Virtua Beach Volleyball we're keeping things seaside-themed for this entry, but we're leaving the waves behind and getting some sand between our toes for a bit of volleyball. Beach volleyball games tend to be one of two things, off-puttingly sexualized or absolute pants, or maybe a bit of both. Beach Spikers Virtua Beach Volleyball, however, stays out of either pigeonhole, more or less. Coming from Sega, the game has a similar arcadey feel to their popular Virtua Tennis series. Pick up and play fun, tight gameplay, multiplayer support, and a colorful style all combined for an enjoyable, sandy, ball-thwacking experience. The game also has a character creator, enabling you to customize your team and add snazzy hats and shades. While not exactly the best game on the GameCube, this is a fun arcade port and a decent way to spend a rainy afternoon. Definitely a hidden gem for fans of beach sports who would rather avoid shovelware and or uh, creepiness. Not much good at the actual beach, though. The tiny GameCube discs don't make good frisbees, so we've learned. Number 3. Pac-Man vs. I know, the title seems unfinished, doesn't it? Just what is Pac-Man actually up against here? Pac-Man vs. the world? Maybe? Well, no, actually. The title is merely alluding to the fact that this is a multiplayer game that pits player against player for maze-based pill-popping fun. That's right, up to four players can enjoy that classic Pac-Man experience together. The player controlling Pac-Man uses a Game Boy Advance and a link cable to guide the hungry yellow sphere around the mazes, while the other players take on the roles of the ghosts that are trying to track him down. The game received high praise, with some even rating it as the GameCube's finest party game. 
Not bad for a system with four Mario Party titles. A likely reason for Pac-Man vs. Slide into relative obscurity is the aforementioned Game Boy Advance and Link cable requirements, shutting out those who didn't have the equipment or the willingness to drop the cash required to pick them up. Those who did go to the expense and effort, however, were rewarded with an excellent multiplayer experience. You can pick it up on the Switch nowadays as part of the Namco Museum too, without a GameCube or Link cable in sight, and thank goodness for that. Number 2. Kururin Squash What's a list of hidden gems without a Japan-exclusive madcap puzzle game to brighten things up a bit? In this particular offering from the Land of the Rising Sun, we are introduced to Kuru Kururin, I think, a duck, maybe, who has to rescue his missing siblings for some reason. Look, it's a simple but addictive puzzle game. You don't need to worry about the storyline. It's all about those bright colours and that sweet, sweet gameplay loop. Kururin Squash's particular quirk revolves literally around a constantly rotating craft called a Hellerin. Yes, which Kururin must guide through various themed mazes. Trust me, it's easier to play than it is to say. Adding to the challenge are tight corridors, bumpers, and devices that change the direction of Hellerin's rotations. Successfully guide Kururin's Hellerin through the level and you're good to go! Hit the side three times though have to start again. Kururin Squash is actually part of a series, including Game Boy Advance titles Kuru Kuru Kururin and Kururin Paradise. Don't know why I said that last word so weirdly. Kururin Squash was the first one to feature a craft piloted by a penguin, though. The others just feature a rotating stick. That's quite the downgrade. Give me a bird-piloted helicopter any day. Number 1. Cubivore – Survival of the Fittest Everyone understands cubes. Everyone loves cubes. Everyone loves games about cubes. So, why didn't this game about cubes take off? Was it too early? Did people not like cubes in 2002? They're playing on a GameCube, for God's sake. What we do know is that Cubivore Survival of the Fittest for the GameCube looks like what might happen if someone threw Minecraft Spore and Viva Piñata into a big old cooking pot and let it stew, I know. What a combination. Cubivore Survival of the Fittest plays like an action-adventure game with surprisingly brutal cube-based combat in which your cube-based animal must kill other cube-based animals by ripping their cube-based limbs off. Do this successfully and your cube-based creature will cube-mutate. Cubetate. Maybe. Mutate enough times and you'll be able to kill the killer cubivore that threatens the wilderness. It's a crazy concept with fun gameplay and cube-based graphics that are currently the height of fashion. Players are even tasked with pairing the cubes off so that they mate and produce cube-based offspring. I had no idea that cubes were capable of such acts. Maybe there's more to that whole companion cube thing than I first thought. Stupid, sexy cubes. 